wrist. How do we try to work with this? We know it's sore because it's given us indication it hurts, all right? You squealed, range of motion's down, it's warm to the touch, obvious swelling. What you want to do is you want to, pardon? Raise your voice. Raise my voice. Okay. What you want to do with the wrist is you're going to want to extend this wrist, wrist straight out and then pull on it gently. You're going to just give some traction. Okay. We're just going to give some traction to this and pull the wrist and massage out the fluid with my thumb. You can go in either direction. It's just easier for me to go towards the toes. We take the wrist and then we just gently twist it a little bit. We're not trying to wrench anything. What we're trying to do is squeeze the fluid out of the tendon sheath. Okay? So we're just massaging in gentle rotation. And again, the massaging helps relax them. And you really can make a difference with massage on different injuries. I'm going to say that a lot here today. So, we've massaged that down. Next I do, I like Elgeville, any ointment is good. We have something that's liquid that's going to help to conduct the heat. I'll put it right directly on the wrist itself. I'll massage it in so it gets through the hair. Okay, they love it. Then what we'll do... I'm a huge fan of using saran wrap on these wrists. I usually take one of these rolls, and this will give me probably two rolls. I'll cut it in half on a bandsaw. Works the best to do it that way. You have a nice clean cut. It's easier to peel off. When it's 40 below and you're trying to peel the stuff off and it's stuck, stuck to itself, it's a real bitch. No one likes to do it. So let's make it so it's easy to do when you're tired. Cut it the right way. Sounds silly and simple, but that's what makes the difference of you using it and not using it. So cut it right. The key to remember when we do a wrist is we want to extend our wrap past the injury. Okay? That means past the toes and above the wrist. If we keep it to one spot, it will act as a tourniquet, and we don't want that. So I'll wrap this on really snug. You're not going to put saran wrap on too tight. Okay. This is our base layer. This really helps to keep the swelling down and keep this sucker really warm. Those of you who have worked with horses know what it's like to sweat a horse out, and this is almost the same thing. You can use a poultice. You can use an ointment. Any sort of ointment helps. Again, I like DMSO if it's legal or Elgeville, which I think is legal. Now, the next thing is where I see people <laughs> fail is they use wrist wraps that are too short. All right? You want to take a wrist wrap that extends past his toes. Then we're going to avoid the tourniquet effect. So I extend this past their toes. And when I place the wrist wrap, I always try to start at the bottom with my thumb. And I pull it over pretty snug. And then I work it up. And my wrap is done. Many people like to use these at every checkpoint, and I have nothing wrong with people doing that as long as doing that doesn't take away from their overall dog care. I think it helps the dog out if you got the time, um, but it's just another labor-intensive thing when you're dealing with 12 or 16 dogs. It's a, it's a drag to do it at every checkpoint if there's no problem. So it can help with prevention, but when you're treating, do it like this. Some people like to use ice. Okay, I did ice for a long time. I like this better. All right, this just works better in my hands than that. If I catch an early wrist, four hours at a checkpoint, this dog will run again. Okay, more than likely, I'll be able to get out of the checkpoint with that dog, and he'll get better. Okay. So, any questions on how to do this wrap? How long do you massage? Oh, I'll massage for five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, a good five minutes of working it through. You can't go wrong with too much massage. Okay, right. but there's a point of. Well, when do I yeah. stop? Five's probably Five. pretty good. Any other questions? No? Okay.